It's another picture in Nagasaki. This happens to be a skeleton of a, a woman. And this was a kind of a common scene as you went through the rubble. I just took the one because it's not that uh, much fun to look at, but I give you an idea of, of what real life was. The next is, this is a torpedo factory in Nagasaki. And you probably can't see it, but I'll call attention to the fact that on the far wall, there's a clock. And on that clock, it stopped at 11 o'clock, which is kind of significant in that that matches exactly the time with which the bomb was, was dropped. And this picture shows the atomic airfield that was mentioned in the report. And that's actually ground zero there. And you can see the Japanese laborers that they referred to working on the airstrip. And it was not you know, a commercial airstrip. It was used for liaison purposes. But the, uh, I've heard several stories on what was there prior to the bomb, this being the epicenter. Some reports say that it was a, uh, an athletic stadium, and others say it was a prison. Well, now you're looking at the exact site in the picture, and if you can tell which was there prior to it, uh, you're a better person than I am, because I can't tell what was there, but I, my uh, gut feeling is it probably was a, a, a stadium of some sort. Here's a picture of downtown Nagasaki, and what we see here on the right hand, upper right hand corner is a remnants of a Catholic church. It was uh, Or Cathedral. Uh, uh, St. Francis uh, landed there in 1650 and established a, uh, a colony, and it flourished up, obviously, until the time of the, of the um, bomb. Here's, this picture was taken just to show you that not, not everything was in absolute total ruin. There were still some um, buildings that were habitable and so forth. And here's a typical uh, scene of transportation with one of the guys in our outfit taking a rickshaw ride. This is a scene of our encampment at the Aura School. Uh, up on the hill uh, away from the uh, from ground zero by a, a distance of about two and a half mile and what gave it added protection is the hillside there because Nagasaki is in the center of the picture and down around to the right and this is a close-up of our uh, barracks area those were school buildings and we used them as barracks and there'll be another picture coming up with a close-up of the area. In front of those buildings, obviously, there's a volleyball game in, in progress there, which provided some recreation. Here's a chapel that uh, we built. In one end of the school, we just took uh, one of the rooms and converted it into a non-denominational chapel for our outfit. This picture is just taken to show you that this was the monsoon season, and just like our hurricane season in Florida and so forth, there was plenty of moisture. You can see the mud we had to live with on a daily basis. This is yours truly in uh, an adopted dog that uh, I found and is pictured with me as our first Sar Sergeant Gordon Van Duzer from Michigan. Now, Dick, uh, when you returned, you brought some other uh, items that uh, be very interesting to uh, yeah. take a look at. Uh, First of all, right in front of me are the sake cups that uh, we took down to the hospital to have checked out for any uh, ionization. And uh, then there's, there's uh, 
uh, a sake jug. Oh, there's the sake cups. And you can see the stains and, and the remnants of where the heat was so intense the glass fused to the porcelain. And they're all spattered up with uh, pieces of metal and so forth there. Um, and those were the ones we had checked. Here's what the uh, un unblemished sake cups would look like. They were um, obviously purchased because they were not abused in any way. And this is a jug that the sakis carried in, and obviously it belonged to a military person. You can tell from the insignia, and I don't know whether this shows up real well or not, but even the inside of the cups bore signs of military insignia. In addition to that, there's this um, little box, uh, which was, it's a lacquered box, just a representative of the type of uh, workmanship that you, was, uh, that abound in Japan. They were very good artisans. And then behind me on the uh, uh, mounting, there are, uh, I'll watch the screen so I can see what he's focusing on, but there is a, uh, a woman's kimono, a black kimono with a gold dragon on it, which uh, very uh, uh, colorful and not very practical here in the USA, but made a nice souvenir. And on another, some other panels there, there are some photos, some pictures, not photos, that I uh, purchased in Japan. Uh, I don't know which one will show up first, but uh, that one is a picture of Buddha and it's painted on a, a kind of a, a silk uh, fabric that's kind of embossed. Uh, my kids just, when they were growing up, just referred to it always as uh, old gruesome. But the, uh, the, the other picture is of a, a geisha girl, and it's as most people picture them, uh, and so emblematic of of women in Japan. Actually, geishas were a very revered uh, profession in Japan. They were entertainers, uh, as opposed to whatever opinion GIs brought back of them. Uh, also